Hey, hey everybody. everybody, it's Joni B. And Jenny B. And Brittany Henry, Executive Director of the Jacksonville Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And we welcome you to Jacksonville, Illinois. Awesome, so we're gonna get out of the picture and take it away. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to Jacksonville, Illinois. We hope you enjoy your tour of Jacksonville over the next couple of days. And uh, we can't um, talk more great things about our community. Um, we are known for so many things, but one of our favorite things to boast about is our Midwest hospitality. While you're here in Jacksonville, we hope you uh, can explore and experience and enjoy everything that we have to offer, starting with our claim to fame, the Big Eli Ferris Wheel. While you're here, you're going to take a drive by and check out one of our acclaimed famed attractions. The Big Eli Ferris Wheel is made and manufactured here in Jacksonville, so I'm sure most of you have at least ridden one, one time in your life. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, as you uh, drive past it here in Jacksonville. A couple other local attractions you're gonna check out is some of our fine history that we have. Jacksonville is known for our historical um, attractions, such as the Governor Duncan Mansion, which is a place you're gonna be touring while you're here. And um, it is the uh, one of the only other standing governor's mansions in the state of Illinois besides Springfield. And there is one um, also that is being worked on in Quincy, Illinois. So we're excited to take you through that and you'll see that while you're here on your tour. We're also known for Woodlawn Farm and Underground Railroad. So you will end um, on one of your tours um, on the Underground Railroad driving tour. You will end out at Woodlawn Farm and take a great tour with um, docent Barbara Salter. And she's gonna show you and tell you the stories of our Underground Railroad history here in Jacksonville, Illinois. You're also gonna visit Strawn Art Gallery. We're known for the arts. Many of you can't say that you have in a town of 19,000 people your own mansion which is an art gallery we're very blessed to have this gallery it has rotating exhibits every month from um, september to may so you're going to get to see some of the fine art pieces as you tour that gallery while you're here with us this weekend we also have um, a symphony although there's not something production going on that's part of our arts so jacksonville has um, a symphony program that just released their season and you can check that out on our website so um, take a look and check out some more of the arts while you're here. If you're looking to do a sneak peek of a new business that's coming to Jacksonville, you are going to take a tour of Water's Edge Bistro Winery, which is gonna be a new to Jacksonville, Illinois coming soon. So I can't wait to show you a little sneak peek. You're gonna be the first audience to see the inside of this building. So Jacksonville has really shown its strength during the pandemic. Um, in the beginning, it was um, gut-riching to see a lot of our business having to close during the lockdown. Um, many of our businesses and attractions here in town have pivoted um, and adapted to the changes during COVID, which we could not be more proud um, of our community for doing so. And what I mean by that is we have a lot of businesses that had taken new ownership prior to this happening. Um, we have a sports complex just a couple weeks prior uh, to the shutdown that had just been bought. Um, April to October is our busiest for sports um, in Jacksonville with baseball tournaments on the weekend. and. Um, they really stepped up and uh, reinvented themselves during this time to create some opportunities later on um, to bring baseball, youth baseball back to our area. And uh, we have new businesses that reinvented themselves. We have businesses um, that have changed names. We have businesses that started offering curbside service, curbside delivery to some of the shops here in town. And uh, our restaurants have been creative with, um, you know, carry out menu items such as uh, margaritas to go from our Mexican restaurants, um, take and bake lasagnas um, from our Italian restaurant, um, and even uh, our ice creamery places here in town, you know, you could get pints of ice cream to go, um, homemade soups to go, sandwiches to go. Everyone really did a great job um, during that time and um, hustled to keep uh, Jacksonville bustling like we have in the past. And um, to say it hasn't been a challenge for us, um, you know, it's true, it has been during this time, but we also as an organization have had to reinvent ourselves on how to market and um, promote the Jacksonville community. Um, now more than ever, um, our job here locally is to um, help these businesses that have given so much back to our community um, throughout the years. We need to help them um, you know, spread their message on the services that they're offering and um, the amenities that they're offering some of our travelers as they're slowly coming back to our community. 
We also work on safety here. We ask everyone to be safe when they travel. So um, that's a lot of things that we've been working on during this time is how do we keep our businesses, restaurants safe um, for our travelers while they're here and our um, overnight accommodations. And everyone has worked greatly um, together to make sure that um, everybody is safe when they enter our community because if our community is not safe, um, then we can't um, actively promote our area to bring you here. And so um, with that, we ask that uh, everyone always call before you visit um, and check on the hours for some of our um, restaurants. Um, some of our attractions aren't currently open right now, um, but we hope to have some of them open soon. But it doesn't mean we can't get you in for a virtual tour or a special tour um, as long as you wear your mask when you're out and about. All right, everyone, I hope you've learned a little bit about Jacksonville, Illinois, but as you're out and about on your tour this weekend, you're gonna learn so much more from all of our great volunteers, business owners, and we can't wait to hear what you have to say about our wonderful community. So as we head out, we're gonna meet up with Judy Tai. She's the executive director of Jacksonville Main Street, and she's gonna tell you a little bit about downtown Jacksonville. We have to give a huge thank you to Brittany and everyone at the Jacksonville Convention and Visitors Bureau. They sponsored this super awesome trip so that we could showcase their town. After popping into the CVB, we hit the chilly Jacksonville streets for a tour of downtown. Judy with Jacksonville Main Street broke down some of the history for us. 11 years ago, the town started a process of revitalization for their town square and the entire downtown area. It was called the Downtown Turnaround, and it's still going steady today. In 1974, actually, Urban Renewal came and it blocked 75% of the vehicular access, blocked off um, literally three-fourths of the streets. It took two streets that were blocked off and they built um, quadrant buildings, we called them buildings, in the middle of where the roadway used to be and then they sold them to private individuals so they lost control of the land, the city did. And um, in addition to that, they tore down about 60 buildings they um, attached brick and steel canopies to the fronts of privately owned buildings and it was devastating. They relocated the parking behind businesses so no one would get out and walk because they just wouldn't. And um, it was really devastating. So uh, when I started almost 20 years ago, our vacancy rate was around 27% and we are now at about 6%. So, That's wonderful. Yes. That's wonderful. We've, we've been growing and um, just even with the COVID shutdown, we've had new businesses open. And you're actually going to get to experience some of those incredible new shops and a few staples of the Jacksonville community. We partnered up with the Jacksonville CVB to create a three video documentary series that shows you some of the incredible things Jacksonville has to offer. Everything from boutiques to restaurants and some incredible art. Let's start with the downtown wall dogs. But this is another one of our projects. We did, um, we had the wall dogs. I don't know if you've ever heard of wall dogs. Um, just a little bit. They are international sign painters really. And they go around and they, and they do mural projects in different communities. And in 2006, we had them come the first time and they created 10 heritage-based uh, murals uh, celebrating our local history. And then last year, we had them come back and they did a restoration on all but one of the original ones to brighten them up, freshen them up. And then they added this one. These were our favorite wall dogs around town. A few months ago, we thought the only Jacksonville was in our home state of Florida. And it turns out, we weren't the only ones. Most people when they hear, I'm from Jacksonville, they think Florida. <laughs> and I did not know that apparently there's a Springfield, Florida, yeah. which is not that far from Jacksonville. So a few years ago, I had a student at some Florida college that called up and said, I want to do an internship. And he's rattling off all his qualifications. And I'm thinking, this sounds great. Great, and he goes, yeah, I just really want to be by the ocean. I was like, <laughs> oh, geography was not your strong suit. Honey. <laughs> There's no ocean here. We have a lake, and we have a town brook, and that's it. So this is our Civil War monument. It acknowledges all of the soldiers and sailors who served in the Civil War from Morgan and Scott County. Back then, we were all one big county, and they since split. 
So all their names are on there. One thing that's significant about it is that in 1920, of course, that was when uh, women suffrage and women got the right to vote. And it's unique in that two of the three figures are women. The one at the top is Columbia. She represents the country. She's looking to the south to uh, awaiting the soldiers return from the war. And this is patriotism. A, a, a boxer from Chicago actually modeled for it. And this one, I love this one, it's my favorite. This is called Sacrifice. And the woman and child represent the toll that war takes on a family. And then of course on the front, um, it acknowledges the end of slavery. So it's, it's a very important statue for a variety of reasons. We think the town square really is the perfect centerpiece for Jacksonville's adorable downtown. You'll even find some cute seats from the Big Eli Ferris wheel that Brittany talked about earlier. After our chili mini tour, it was time to make our way to one of the newer downtown businesses, Elm City Roastery and Juice Bar. Here we had the opportunity to watch the roasting process of some of their amazing coffee beans. Roaster Richard walked us through the process from green beans to roasted beans, and we were speechless. It's nothing like the process we expected. This adorable roaster is connected to Richard's computer, so we can monitor everything from the time to the temperature. As the roaster was heating up, Richard gave us the basics of how it all works. Small version of the, this is the, uh, the exit where the, the beans go in through this hopper, okay, and they come out through here. There's two different gauges on here. This is telling the, uh, the exiting temperature of the air that's going through the system. This is an analog thermometer. I also have two thermometers that are in this system. There's one here and one here, and those are digitally monitored. But y'all, that's not even the half of it. And Richard is so passionate about the roasting process that he takes great care in every step. He starts by documenting his predictions, kind of like a scientific hypothesis, about what temperature the roast will peak at, the lowest it'll go, how long the roast will last, and things like that. He then measures the weight of a given volume of beans. Right now, they're still small and green. He records that information in his roasting record. Once he finishes with his initial notes and the machine is at the proper temperature to start, it's time to drop the beans. Anyway, we're ready to go there. He spends his time monitoring the temperature and watching the beans change color from green to yellow and brown. He monitors the temperature closely because if it drops too low, the beans won't roast properly. But if it gets too hot, they can be scorched, which gives you that intense, bitter burnt flavor which you absolutely don't want. He'll check the beans periodically by pulling one out and giving it a sniff. As the bean roasts, the scent and flavor start to come out in full force. So checking on those beans periodically helps ensure a successful roast. Oh yeah! Get a little bit of that? Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, there it is. Alright, so I'm saying at 364, at 830, that's great. Oh my god, that's so cool! Right. <laughs> and there's my fall. When they've reached the perfect color and smell, it's time to let the beans out and start cooling them. He stirs them and lets them cool before taking the weight of the same volume of beans he checked in the beginning. Check the beans that are going on right now, and they are at 100. So they've lost. 90 grams of weight in the same volume. I haven't lost that much in beans, but I've lost 90 grams, so I got 100 here. After watching Richard roast some beans, we got to taste some of the yummy Elm City coffee and food. Joni B had the honey vanilla latte, and I had the fireside latte, which is brown sugar, cinnamon, and nutmeg mixed into their house roasted espresso. We also had the chipotle chicken griller, which was cheesy chicken topped with chipotle ranch. The other two items they served were their classic chocolate chip cookie, which Brittany swears is absolutely the best cookie ever. And we also had their apple nachos, both of which we enjoyed later that night. Then it was time to head to our home for the next three nights, Blessings on State. We made it to Blessings on State, and I would just like to say that it's very 
flipping cold and I asked for fall. I didn't ask for winter. It is frigid, but it's actually not, it's 40 something degrees. We had to go get jackets at Walmart because we weren't prepared for this. But I'm about to go inside and show you guys this amazing B&B. Let's go. This beautiful B&B is actually the reason we found Jacksonville in the first place. The lovely innkeeper Gwen found us through another video we posted this year. She connected with our storytelling and allowed us into her beautiful bed and breakfast. We are so blessed that she did. Thank you a million times over, Gwen. You'll get to see more of this beautiful place and hear from Gwen herself in another video. But this sneak peek should wet your whistle. <sighs> I like to say that we pack light most of the time, but by myself I have six bags this go around. That's not very light. But you know, it is what it is. You gotta make sure you have all your stuff together. We are going to maybe freshen up a bit and head out to dinner. We're going to Lanzarote's tonight. Very excited, so we will see you guys then. Bye! Gwen took us on a beautiful drive through Jacksonville and the Strawn Art Gallery. It was the home of one of the wealthiest families in the Jacksonville area. In 1915, this beautiful brick home was given to the Art Association of Jacksonville to be used as an art gallery. It's held continuous exhibitions ever since. Every exhibit change starts with a gallery talk that showcases the new artists that will be showing in the gallery. Then their beautiful pieces are put on display for everyone to enjoy. You can see their 2020 to 2021 calendar on their website. We had the chance to view some incredible acrylic, oil, and watercolor paintings by Reverend Jane Falk and unique ceramics by Karen Fiorino. Then it was time for dinner at Lanzarotti's. Uh, I'm John Whitney. I am uh, one of the owners along with my parents, Frank and Sue Whitney. And I've been here off and on for 15 years. Started out washing dishes, went through the ranks, and then uh, it finally, my previous owner wanted to get rid of it. And I was like, hey, mom, dad, you guys want to help? And we're doing it now. So we're in our fourth year and going on five. We're chugging along. What's your favorite thing? The food. Uh, food, I would say probably the breadsticks, just because they, they melt in your mouth. And, and it depends on the right humidity and things like that. They get a little funny sometimes, but when you get the right temperature going with them, they proof long enough, they're perfect. We'll be sharing more about our delicious experience at Lonzo's in another video coming soon. But here's a tasty sneak peek. And then we made the drive back to the B&B to process this incredible first day. You wanna start with what we had on our bed waiting for us? Okay. Toiletry bags with everything from- A dental kit. Body lotion, bath gel, conditioner, shampoo, soap. This little green thing that looks like candy, but I don't think it is. I think it might be a soap. I think it's a soap. And this nice little bag. I love bags. And we had an ornament. Thank you, Queen. And a magnet. Oh, I love the magnet. Look at it. And we both got one, so we don't have to share. We had slippers. I'm not sure if these are gonna fit my big feet, but I'm prepared to see right now. Well, ah, I got it. No, it's yes. in here. I got it. They fit my feet. <laughs> I have learned a lot about this area. I mean, who knew that hefty? I know. Which brings us to our first item. We got some hefty gallon bag, ziploc -y. Because, no, not Ziploc, that's a different brand. What are they called? It's hefty, hefty, hefty. Storage bags. So, they are a homegrown business here. And so is Nestle. 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 What is this? Oh, okay. So. Oh, I remember. <laughs> so they have what they call a quilt shop hop. And you go to these different um, quilt shops and there's 15 shops. And they're all like Jacksonville, um, Galesburg, Oneida, Peoria. And you go to these places and you get 
the quilt squares. a quilt square and they can take it home and make a quilt. We are personally not <laughs> gonna be making a quilt, but we will admire these nice quilt squares. They have a friend who lives in North Dakota, Marie, this this is your thing. I know because you used to have the quilting place up there in North Dakota. And because Gwen watched our videos and knows that I have an obsession with notebooks, I got a notebook. So thank you so much, She's Gwen. amazing. She, she knows all about us. I think everybody here, we usually do our research, but it's not often that people do their research on us. And so we've had people... Mm -hmm. Oh no. Just our, leave that in there. Our jukebox coins. <laughs> How the heck? What the heck? <laughs> what the heck? How do we do that? How did it get hooked onto that? I don't understand the science. Oh, there it is. It's. I see it. Somehow, it got hooked. It decided that it wanted to be a part of it. Oh! <laughs> Oopsies! There are going to coins! <laughs> Oopsies! Um, um. See what it's hooked on right there? Mm -hmm. Oh, there Oh, there we go. Here, you pull it down. Ow! You want to hold Ow. this down? I don't know. Ow! How in the heck? <laughs> no, it's still right. That was, that's... I think I got it. There, there, there. <gasps> We're going here. Candles We're going here, here tomorrow. Homegirls. I'm super pumped. It's been <gasps> Mine's coffee house. That's that one you were looking at, too. It's been a remarkable day, people. It's been amazing. This is just the beginning. Oh, we saw more things to discuss. Oh, Christmas my, farm in. One of my favorite things we got is this ice scraper, which I will thankfully not have to use because I don't know. We might be using it in December. If you don't, oh, that's true because we're gonna be going to Pennsylvania where it's cold. <gasps> is that a coloring page? We can color. We can color. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, it's a map. No, it's a coloring book. Yay. It's a coloring book. A luggage tag. A cup. Playing cards. Oh, and since we- so elegant. Since we both have a deck, we could play oh. Michigan Rummy. If you've never played, I'm gonna find a way to link the instructions down below because our pals, Bob and Liz from the Viking Cruise showed us how to play Michigan Rummy and we're obsessed with it. We also got an electric card shuffler. Oh, but that that's fun. Because of Bob and Liz. Hand sanitizer. It's that fancy kind that you spray on it. Like this. I did, didn't break it. No, I didn't break it. I just didn't think about closing my lid. What is in here? Why is it making that noise? There's stuff in it! There's no stuff in my... Oh yeah, there is. There's Nescafe coffee. And they gave you a little stir stick. That's very thoughtful. That's very cool. I didn't even notice there was anything rattling in there. Look at me. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! It's pretty solid, very solid. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, there are two more videos even more jam-packed than this first one. The awesome people at the Jacksonville Convention and Tourism Bureau and Gwen with Blessings on State gave us an action-packed itinerary. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you want to stick around for our journey through Jacksonville, which we highly recommend you do, all you have to do is subscribe. It doesn't cost you nothing to hit that button, y'all. Thanks for tuning in, and thank you to the Jacksonville CVB for sponsoring the series. Good job!